Chicago warehouses have notoriously been one of the most profitable businesses in GTA Online. Considering they're paying double money this week, let's cover a full guide from setting this up to making as much money as possible. If you're a beginner or a specialist in the game, hopefully this video covers everything you need to know about the cargo warehouse business in less than 5 minutes. In order to own a cargo warehouse, first we need to purchase a CEO office. You're scratching your head thinking, which one should I buy? It really depends how much money you have, and to be fair, it's really just the location and appeal that you're paying for. They all work the same, so if you're struggling for cash in the game, I'd consider the Maze Bank West Tower. They're also all on 30% discount right now, so it's an even better time to get one. Once you own an office, now make your way into the building, head to your interaction menu and register as a CEO or VIP. Sit in your computer chair, enter the laptop and select Special Cargo. And from there, you can see all of the cargo warehouses to choose from. There's three options to choose from, small, medium, and large. The small cargo warehouse only holds up to 16 crates, the medium holding 42 crates and the large warehouse holding 111. Obviously, if you can afford it, I definitely consider getting a large cargo warehouse as it's of course going to profit you the most amount of money and be the most efficient. You can also purchase up to five warehouses, meaning with a five minute cooldown period between resupply missions, this means you can go to your other warehouses and cycle through resupply missions, again, making you more efficient. So I would recommend maybe purchasing two businesses to maximize your profits. So you're thinking, how does the business work? Well, you simply are going to buy crates from the laptop screen in your CEO, either one, two, or three at a time. I'd strongly suggest always buying three crates in one go. Reason being, you'd much rather go and do one mission and have three crates by the end of it, compared to doing the same exact thing and only having one crate by the end, taking up the same amount of time. Even though it's cheaper to do one crate at a time, you're going to be much more efficient in getting your crate supply level up faster, and in the long run, this will lead to more profits. So just go ahead and buy three crates. Sometimes you get a mission where you have to drive around the map to find the right vehicle with the crates stored inside, which is one of the better missions. And sometimes you'll get a mission where you have to collect all three crates individually, which just sucks. There's no other way to put it. Once you've completed the mission, if you only own one warehouse, I'd go and grind another business. However, if you own more than one, you can rinse and repeat the cycle of sourcing crates. Another way you can get crates in the business is by going up to your staff member and paying a fee to source the cargo. They'll either find one, two, or three crates, and this takes 48 real-time minutes to resupply. In the meantime, you can still continue grinding crate missions, which is what makes this business so profitable and efficient. Another great way to make money through this business is the export mixed goods missions. Just go to your assistant in your CEO office and you'll see the option to begin the mission. These pop up every 48 minutes and are really easy to do. For those who own a bunker, you'll be familiar with the ammunition contract missions. It's pretty similar to that, just driving a truck with goods on it and delivering it to a drop off point. With double money, it's going to pay 100k each time this week, otherwise it's usually 50k, which is a great additional way to profit from your cargo warehouse. Now, before we sell our crates, it's time for some additional tips. Set your spawn location to your CEO office, making it much faster to find a new lobby and quickly starting up crate missions. You can also call your terabyte out and source missions through there. As well, you can also start missions up through your master control terminal in your arcade if you own one. Now, when it comes to selling the cargo itself, I would fill up each warehouse until it has nine crates and then do a sell mission. This is pretty much a guaranteed to give you one vehicle and will be the most efficient way. A good thing about this business is you can sell the crates in an invite only lobby, which is great as it means you won't be getting grief. However, I would recommend selling in a public lobby as it will pay a higher bonus per player in the lobby. So maybe find one with 20 players or more. Also use ghost organization to help you out when delivering, which will put you off the map to other players trying to grief. You can run the risk of filling up your crates entirely, but this will help out those with a smaller warehouse and your chances of getting raided will be much lower. That's also gonna benefit those those solo players who don't have people to help them out with those large crate sell missions. But overall, there is plenty of money to be made. That's it for this cargo warehouse money guide. I hope this helped you out in one way or another. If it did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.